So it's a uh, Wednesday, um, early evening. We've been here since Saturday, and I don't think anyone's caught any fish at all on uh, Napoleon Lake One. It's just been too hot. I think it was in the 32, 33 degrees region during the day. What have you caught, Rachel? Critter. <laughs> it's as bad as it sounds. <laughs> so. I'm only drinking it because I can't go back to the shop. Fair enough. So this is uh, Swim One, um, Napoleon Lake One. And uh, to all intents and purposes, it's probably got the most amount of water and the most amount of spots. And plenty of uh, overhangs. Uh, Barry's ensured us that the uh, the far margin's been uh, recently cleaned out of snags. We only got snagged up today for the first time in the week. It's not been too bad. I've hired the bait boat down there. And the captain. Um, which has proved to be quite helpful. Not in catching fish, but just in putting the bait out right across. It's putting the bait out a lot more fun. And uh, we're just set up for the evening now. So uh, all three rods primed, ready to go. Barry's been kind enough to give us uh, a kilo of his own lake boilie to try. So uh, I don't know which one it is actually. It's got the uh, strong hint of garlic in it. And we'll see how that goes this evening. What the website doesn't make you aware of is that from approximately 10 past 7 in the morning you have lots of uh, lorries just over the border there behind the trees delivering what is presumably lots of uh, empty bottles of French wine or champagne to a recycling plant. So the deliveries start from about 10 past 7 and from 10 to 8. There's a lot of noise as the processing plant gets going and all the smashing of bottles. Absolutely no activity at all. You hear a couple of crashes in the middle of the night. I can honestly say, in the five days we've been here, I have not seen a single carp. Could you tell if the fish was still on, Barry? Uh, no, fish on. no fish on, right. Second. You dance like your dad. So I thought we'd uh, just show you the bivy we've got uh, for France. We used to have the uh, JRC Quad Continental. Uh, there was a slight problem with that, took it back to Eric's angling and uh, we appear to have a, an XL version, the, the much bigger version. Uh, difference is the Quad Continental has uh, an inner fly um, and an outer system, whereas the XL just has the one um, the one sheet, so you have to buy a winter skin with it. So this is it. It's absolutely massive. Um, 
even though it's red hot over in France this week, we put the winter skin on mainly to, to stop the sun coming in too much. The, uh, the sun heats up the, the inner material. So at least you get a bit of shade with the winter skin on. Um, it's all pegged down. Um, you have a clear plastic door on the outer skin and something which is a, bit, a little bit better than the, the dome version. You've got um, uh, a fly mesh door which can zip up or down. So if you, if you like the letterbox approach, you can zip it down. We'll go in from the bottom. <laughs> I want just to show you that if it's a bit hot, you want to breeze. We'll take the winter skin off its pegs. And you can actually just clip the winter skin back. So it's got the extra windows, which the dome version doesn't have. So going in, you can actually see there is tons of room. So you can get probably three large bed chairs in there with ease. Although, to be honest, it's, it's nice to have the two and a bivvy table in the middle, plenty of luggage space. And the, oh, I think we both agree the best thing about this is that you can stand upright. Uh, upright in there, no ducking down, so it saves on your back. It's got two hooking points on the roof, so we can use little bivvy lights. We have these cheap eBay ones for about £5 each, really quite handy. Uh, two windows at the back but that's only on the inner so if you've got the winter skin on you don't get the breeze so I'm thinking about getting the, the winter skin changed to get the extra windows on the back but all in all I think it's a pretty good system we haven't had it out in the torrential rain yet um, but JRC is pretty good company uh, the bivvy we had before was pretty good it's basically the, the larger version of that so there you go one review of the bivvy Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, ça va. Oui, ça va bien, merci. J'aime beaucoup du fromage. You love cheese? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you just said? When the fish ain't biting, there's only one drink for me. Critter. Mm-mm. <laughs> So tell me about yourself, Kyle. What do you like to do in your spare time? I like to fish. Do you like to fish or do you like to camp? It's technically camping because there's no fish involved. <laughs> What's your favourite fish? Perch. For any particular reason? Because I caught one. <laughs> well, in fairness, you didn't realise you'd caught one. No, I just reeled Poor it Poor little in. thing was dangling from a barbed hook for five minutes before you realised. Yeah. And then what else have we done today? We've had dinner. And? And what about the lake particularly? Um, so we've had two runs. Yeah. From what must be fairly decent fish. Yeah. Um, so Napoleon 1 has up to, is it 62 pound? That's the, the lake record. Uh, although we're not seeing anything of the fish not been showing at all. Uh, but. What day is it say? It's Thursday. Thursday. So we've been here since Saturday without any blips at all. And then we get two runs in quick succession today. Over in the far corner, uh, which is near the static caravan where uh, Barry and Tony live. That's uh, over there near the, the hut where we eat as well. So it's a little kind of bay area. But the fish know to take you into the snags really quickly. Uh, so I've lost... A little bit of end tackle. So, sounds painful, doesn't it? It does sound painful. It also sounds slightly amusing. Not as amusing as my butt ring.